My name is Alexandra Hasandrea, and this is my husband. Uh, my name is Manasi Gassessa. Um, we are parents of Alexandra Irini Gassessa. Uh, who graduated from Granite. She went to elementary school at St. Timothy's, and now she's a third year at uh, UC Santa Barbara. Hello, I'm Dolores Williams. I'm the grandmother of Naja and Khalil Williams, who I've raised as my two children at my second time around. Hi, my name is Yvonne Brown. And my name is Ty Brown, and we are the parents of three lovely kids, uh, Brittany Brown, who attends Boston University Graduate School, uh, Chandler Brown, Harvard uh, University in his last year, and our third kid is Madison Brown. She attends Sitting Bull Elementary Academy. She had to go to St. Timothy's, a private school, because her cousins, Abigail, Ida, and her family friend, Lily David, went to St. Timothy's. So it was very easy to decide which school to take her to. And uh, my sister-in-law, Manasseh's uh, sister, was very connected and very engaged with the school. And a lot of the friends that we knew, their kids went to that school. Yeah, actually, uh, we were blessed to have an, uh, some kind of data to look at because my sister's daughter were going there. The key thing is, is it's just to make her feel more comfortable that if there is a, an, an area where they encourage her to read and communicate yes. with people, with her friends, the activities, and I saw there's a lot of reading assignment that they give them at that level, and uh, I said, this is it, we should keep yes. her in, in, in that school. The first thing I had to determine is their course, and for me, Everything is strategic. I had to decide by the time they graduated from high school, where did I want them to be? I decided I wanted them to be college ready, workforce ready, military ready, and to be able to choose options. And in order to do that, I had to really define what our tools were that we had in the home and resources and how to develop that strategy. I believe having the two grandchildren, I owned their success. So I treated that process as if it was a project. I'm big on communication and knowing what's going on at school and knowing what's going on in the classroom and making sure we've got that dialogue going. Um, with Madison, you know, Britton Chandler changed schools more. Madison was pretty much at the same school through elementary, so I did I could volunteer more in her school. Um, and so that also was an avenue. But I never hesitate if I see something or think something is amiss to call, email, hey, you know, I'm, I'm noticing something is a little, what's going on here? You know, I want them to know we're involved and that they have that avenue to let me know if they see something going a little wrong or either. When, it was, when she was in elementary school, it was easy because each time I drop her or pick her up, I'll walk in and talk to the teacher. So it was easy to have family parents night. So we'll get engaged in that. But when she started going to high school, it was a little bit difficult. The activities start getting more. She wants to get more involved. So I made sure the first year that I met with the teacher every month. Then after that, I made sure if they wanted to call me, they can call me. I don't have to go see them um, each month, but there was a phone call. But Alex was a very good student. Well, the first approach was to build a partnership, to build a partnership with the school. And that was my first step in the, in the strategy, is meeting with the schools, understanding what the school was offering, the climate, the culture of the school, and actually being able to just design the program within that school that I wanted my children to uh, be a part of. I would have up, say, their ABCs, you can get them, i get them at the dollar store and you'd put them around the, the room and, and throughout the day, you know, you, I, I never had them sit down and focus and you gotta do this, they're two, they're three, they're four. You know, so we would always, okay, you know, okay, what's this letter, what's this letter, as you go through your day or see different things, or okay, what's the sound of this? Oh, hey, you know, as you're walking through your day and they might want an apple, what's the first sound? Ah, 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 you know, and 
So we kind of incorporated it into life, you know. In addition, uh, as Yvonne has said, with the note cards and things of that nature, I mean, she kind of made it light, but it's ABCs written all the way on every wall in the house <laughs> is what's happened. And so uh, they were learning it by just passing through. The numbers are on the walls in our home. And so they it would be reinforced without us saying anything. So I had to basically stay in touch with their teachers, monitor their success through the monitoring tools that was available at this, their school. So build relationships, as many relationships in the community with as many parents that are like you, that are like-minded with you. Uh, stay in touch, show your interests, show up every opportunity that you can. But the most important thing is make sure that your teacher, your, the principals, even the superintendents of the schools, they know who you are. So Alex comes from mixed parents. You know, I'm half Ethiopian, half Greek. Her dad is from Ethiopian. So she had an issue of belongingness. She was not white enough. She was not black enough. So, and that was a little bit hard for her when she was in high school. But we told her, that does not define you. What defines you, what you do, what you say. As she says, she's a mixed, uh, uh, you know, people put her in this, live with her. And she we sat down, we actually had a sitting with her uh, teacher to deal with this. Mm -hmm. uh, because I felt the uh, teacher didn't understand that. Oh, yeah. She was really uh, putting her in a, uh, you know, box. in a little box. And uh, we, we, uh, I had to communicate this to the teacher. There was a hard discussion, but I was willing to. So there's nothing you ha we had to uh, exp explain to the teacher because it was a learning thing for her too. We, I, I shared with her, she's really an independent thinker. Yes, you see, you're looking at the package, but give her a room and judge her with what she's yeah. producing. Um, the schools that we have interact have been good and have been open and uh, been receptive to what we've been asking and what we want. Uh, it was at a point where they felt that maybe they need to jump uh, the kids in uh, Chandler in particular. And to us, we were, you know, of course, flattered to hear it, but we just wanted to keep uh, him in particular where he was at because we had started him a little early we thought anyway and then they were going to try to boost him up a little bit more and it just we didn't think it was necessary we just wanted to get the best that they could get for uh, each of them at that time. So were... I think the first uh, when she knows how to write A or W and she gets a good grade I put it right in front oh, of the yes. bedroom. We stick it right there oh, yes. so she can see. Really, we still uh, have it. We still have it. And the guest bedroom. Oh, I love it. Her and first grades and yes. her uh, 100 or 160. Oh, yes. I made sure she sees that. And, uh, oh, and uh, we, she, she, she used to love it. Dad, well, how about my other one? She's, after a while, she gets her book. She expects those things. And she understood. Yes. These little subtle things, uh, that's what uh, that's was expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, we, I, I learned it because my parents did that to me. We had walls. Brittany would have her wall. She could put up anything, any academic work, or, you know, any pictures that she drew. Da, da, da. Chandler had his wall, and of course the refridge. Um, Matt had her wall, uh, which kind of went down the hall. <laughs> and so, yeah, they, they would put up, you know, if they got to ward at school, it would go up on the wall if they got a trophy, it goes above the fireplace, um, you know, whatever they did. It's celebrated, you know, within the family and we recognize it and definitely put it up and display it for them. Back um, with Chandler's graduation party, we kind of did the celebration. We had a table out and he would have the different hats of the different schools. You like know, the athletic had, kids yeah. get to right. do. So we had like <laughs> the Harvard, the Princeton, you know, all the Ivy Leagues that and offered MIT. him, MIT, <laughs> a hat. And then he would, okay, make his decision, okay, uh, and he would grab like the Yale hat and throw it down. And then finally <laughs> he grabbed the Harvard hat and A, hey, and then we finally knew. But, you know, so we do those celebrations with them yes. um, as Brit 
Uh, Brittany just graduated from Cal State Northridge. Same thing, we had another big family flew in. Um, so as we completed that celebration, um, we took her out front and we had a nice gift for her, uh, a, a car that blew her mind. So <laughs> I just wanted to say we do appreciate yeah, uh, totally. these things that you're doing. Yes, we're you know glad you made it through high school. Uh, we thought you know making it through college as an honor student um, was you know something that needed to be rewarded. Yeah. Everybody who touched my child, from the janitor to the superintendent, everybody who had, had some say-so. We sat down with those folks on a regular basis, whether they were in board meetings, parent-student conferences, to say, we understand our role. Our role as, my role as a parent is to own my student's success. And I may not know, or I may not have all the resources, but I'm gonna find out where those resources are. The school had a critical role. And another role of mine was to keep the school accountable to their role. And, and I understood that their role was to perform, to provide the best academic curriculum and support system that would help me to achieve my objective of having my children prepared college ready, career or workforce ready. When it was when she was in elementary school it was easy because each time I drop her or pick her up, I'll walk in and talk to the teacher. So it was easy to have family parents night. So we'll get engaged in that. But when we start going to a high school it was a little bit difficult. The activities start getting more, she wants to get more involved. So I made sure the first year that I met with the teacher every month. Then after that I made sure if they wanted to call me they can call me, I don't have to go see them um, each month, but there was a phone call. I kind of, first I was all ears. I wanted to hear what the teacher had, what did she base her decision on. And immediately I observed that uh, she made a mistake. So I, I, I told her, first of all, I think should, this should be merit-based. Uh, yeah. Look at if she's capable of doing it. If she's, if she's not, there's no reason for us to come and complain. I asked her, have you given her an opportunity to show you what she's capable of? And she couldn't answer. And uh, it was a little bit upsetting. And uh, I didn't want to escalate it in that little bit higher. But I, one thing I, I was observant is I made her aware that her decision was wrong. And I gave her a room and said, can we have this discussion next time? Please have a talk with the principal of the school and see which you know, what you can come up with. The first thing is, let them be a chatterbox in the house. Don't, yes. whatever it is, because they will, they will come out. You really have to give them what they mean. How are you? How's your day? What's, what happened today? You, you have to really like the, the, the dialogue. And that's one thing. Sometimes I tell them, can we eat before, you know, because once you start talking, you just you can't put, you need the duct tape to you know, I want to interrupt here. We made sure that we had dinner every night as a family. Um, that's we it. grew up like that. Yeah. Uh, my parents will come from work. And it's a must. We have dinner and everybody will talk about their day. So we made sure, same thing with my with my husband, their family, the same thing. We grew up together. We know each other from way back. So his family, the same thing. They have dinner and yeah, they important. chatted. With Alex, the same thing. Every night we have to have dinner and everybody will talk about their day. I would have up, say, their ABCs. You can get them, i get them at the dollar store and you'd put them around the, the room. And, and throughout the day, you know, you, I, I never had them sit down and focus and you got to do this they're two they're three they're four you know so we would always okay you know okay what's this letter what's this letter as you go through your day or see different things or okay what's the sound of this oh hey you know as you're walking through your day and they might want an apple what's the first sound ah, 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 you know and so we kind of incorporated it into life you know in addition uh, as Yvonne has said with the note cards and things of that nature I mean she kind of made it light, but it's ABCs written all the way on every wall in the house is what's <laughs> happening. And so uh, 
they were learning it by just passing through. The numbers are on the walls in our home. And so they, it would be reinforced without us saying anything. Early on, we start addressing loving the whole idea of learning. So because I was told that they were going to be academically uh, slower than the rest of the kids, we made learning fun. So I went out and bought a, a number of learning games and every toy that they ever received from the time that I uh, uh, took custody of them until the 12th grade, every toy, uh, every gift that they ever received had something to do with learning and they started to really, really love learning. We made learning fun in our home. Uh, we had game night every night. And so their strengths were, were, were learning. And therefore, uh, Naj and Khalil, from the kindergarten to 12th grade, I don't think there has ever been a time that we're not on the honor roll. And it, it's, it's not because they were different from other kids. It's because uh, of what we did in the home. 